So this is where we start. When this movie discovered me around 2006, era uma vez. I was in São Paulo taking care of my mother who had just undergone a heart surgery. Close to the hospital, a bookstore. I went to pick up something to read but went back to the hospital with a copy of this movie which I knew nothing about. I had been seduced by its cover and while my mother slept I watched it from my laptop and was enchanted by the tremendous beauty and I cried. In 2007 I presented a paper entitled Translating the Sacred Wind, the Delicate and Redemptive Poetics of Joel Zito Araújo at Laza in Montreal. On the panel, Ana Beatriz Gonçalves, Ana Paula Alves Ribeiro, and Emanuele Oliveira Monte. These Anas in red, uh, and yet another Ana, gave me what I prayed for, some of Joel Zito's other movies. And I continued to watch his work and publish with him. First at David William Foster's Shasky, and then at Ricardo Aleixo's Roda in the company and under the suggestion of Edmilson de Almeida Pereira. Some years went by and I was invited to co-edit a volume of Afro-Hispanic Review, a special issue on Afro-Brazil. My partner in this venture was Emanuele Oliveira Monti. And why am I telling you this? Because it takes a village. It takes joint effort, efforts, especially in a field like Afro-Brazilian literature and culture to make things happen, to cross the bridge and meet, to learn to move in this contemporary diaspora of scholars and artists spread around the world. So I evoke these images, these persons who led us to where we are today. I need to highlight the importance of anthologies, such as this one, which appear perhaps once in every 20 years, if we are lucky. In this, there was an interview with Joel Zito Araújo. The author, I learned later, was Sumaya Machado Lima and we started exchanging emails and materials. When she wrote me around a month ago telling me that she and Joel Zito were to spend a month at Chapel Hill, I thought, wouldn't it be beautiful if they could visit us at ASU? And I started passing the hat, and all those whom I previously evoked, many present today, made this happen. But Sumaya, Sumaya Machado Lima, she was born in Rio de Janeiro. She holds a master's in literary studies, da Pontificia da Universidade Católica Rio de Janeiro, and a PhD in literary theory, Federal University of Santa Catarina in Florianópolis. Sumaya's research focuses on gender, Brazilian culture, and cinema. Currently, she's a professor at Universidade Estadual de Montes Claros, Minas Gerais. Her lecture today is entitled Daughters of the Wind, African Diasporic Cartographies Beyond the Screen. Daughters of the, the Wind is a movie that dialogues intrinsically with the movie you we watch today, Denying Brazil. One could say that what one, uh, that what one achieved as a documentary, the other achieved as a feature film. They complement each other, like the guests we have here today. And Joel Zito Araújo, who up until this morning only existed in my imagination and in virtual communications. The award-winning Afro-Brazilian filmmaker, director, writer, and executive producer of feature films, documentaries, television shows, and educational videos. 24 documentaries, 22 shorts, and three full-length features. Eu te apresentei como o Joel Zito brasileiro. Joel Zito, não. como o Spike Lee brasileiro. Four Eu até troquei. Four Hã? Four features, not three. Four, four, yeah. sorry. 
Uh, some of the movies Joel Zito created and directed include Raça, que eu ainda não assisti, Denying Brazil, Daughters of the Wind, and Cinderella's Wolves and One Prince Charming. Araújo was born in Nanuki, Minas Gerais, in 1954. He holds a doctorate in Communication Science from the School of Communication and Arts of Sao Paulo University. And he's currently artist in residence at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. So this is how the event will go today. We will start by screening Denying Brazil, a full-length documentary about prejudices, taboos, and the evolution of black characters in Brazilian soap operas. The documentary lasts 21 minutes. Please make sure your cell phones are on mute. I have to do this to mine. After the screening, we will have a five-minute break, followed by Sumaya and Joel Zito's presentations. We will then open the forum for debate, and we will continue debating at House of Tricks. You are all welcome to join us. Thank you for being here. I ask you on behalf of all those directly and indirectly involved in the production of this event, and on behalf of our most distinguished guests, I ask you for a round of applause. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for your attention by, for this um, 20 minutes. I'd like to know if there is any Brazilian student, Brazilian one, two, three, ok. Muito obrigada pela presença de vocês. É um prazer, uma honra muito grande a gente conversar sobre a nossa cultura aqui com vocês também, tá bom? I'd like to sit a little bit because uh, our trip uh, get late and we uh, couldn't, couldn't uh, take um, a rest, you know? If I... No, there is another one, another one. Uh, no, I sit on the floor. And oh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If, yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I was, uh, everything, uh, everybody's uh, looking at me, is, can see me? Mm -hmm. Okay. As uh, we have short time, uh, I will... Uh, um, don't want, I won't say everything I prepared too, because we, I'd li we'd like to, to hear our artist Jose Araújo, and uh, we'd like to give you um, some uh, uh, minutes to um, interact with us during the deb uh, debate. Okay, so I will start, and please, as uh, I can, yes, yeah, no, no, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Daughters of the Wind, African Diasporic Cartographies Beyond the Screen, by Sumaya Machado Lima, and translated, very nice translation, by Dr. Isa uh, Costa um, McElroy. In 2006, when I watched Daughters of the Wind, uh, for the first time, I was happy to see something that seemed a complete novelty the first Brazilian feature film with a predominantly uh, lack, uh, black uh, cast in a contemporary theme. The redemption of uh, two sisters. They could have been from any ethnic group, but they were black. The plot seemed very natural, uh, but on the big screen it was uh, unprecedented. Whoever uh, has followed at least 20 years of the Brazilian cinema development felt as surprised as I did. What? No white folks? Black women in protagonist roles? Well, we were finally watching our contemporary black people, common men and women, sus, um, susceptible 
uh, to live passions and family problems as in any other ethnic group. A film that skipped the usual stereotypes. Uh, the suffered or hearty uh, black mummy, the black thieves, uh, the uh, red bloated mulattas, uh, the servants, the nannies, secondary and interesting uh, characters in the narrative. At the same moment, I was realizing the special importance of that movie in the social and political context of Brazilian cinema. This movie was in itself an affirmative action, but for the unaware ones, it was just a normal story. The movie reveals some subtitles of the uh, affirmation of the black Brazilian culture developing and interplay between fiction and reality, and bringing elements from the African matrix to the filmic diagesis in the personal <clears throat> personalities, the discursors, the design, in the characteristics of the characters, and in the scenario. I will pass it through, please, not personalities, uh, to um, slide six, please. Here, here, okay. Um, I will talk now just a part of my my discourse. So refer, uh, refer. Um, I'm sorry, my my bad English. <laughs> Please uh, pay, take a, a little patient with me. Referentialities in the scenery, characters, and discourses. Right. It's not by chance that the baroque scenery scenery. Scenery. Scenery was chosen to open and close the narrative, which bursts with antithesis and paradoxes. The Baroque Church of Minas Gerais, uh, located in the fictional town of Daughters of the Wind, is the perfect spot to indicate the transformation of the characters. The movie opens up with the death and burial of the Zedas Bicicletas, Milton Gonçalves, that you've uh, had seen in the other film, The Nine Brazil, uh, some minutes ago. It starts with Zé, uh, past, and it ends in the present with the hope of a re-beginning for these daughters and granddaughters revealed in the last dialogue between Ju and Sida. Uh, please, slide seven. Uh, Ju and Sida, which shows their redemption. Uh, if you didn't see Daughters of the Wind, uh, Milton Gonçalves is that sir, could you please help me? That sir that uh, has a very experience, okay? That you saw now in this uh, film. The, the most predominant black actor in the nine Brazil. Yes, uh, the mature one. Mm -hmm. The discourse of the characters represents the fears for the future and the old feminine conflict between um, going out to the world to build a successful career or staying at home raising a family. Sida Ruth de Souza uh, complains. Ruth de Souza is this one, okay? Complains. He knows you. I achieved a successful career, bought my own house, a car, but that's not all, is it? Ju Lea Garcia, your right, on your right, disagrees. You have to, to raise your hands to heaven. How many black women have gotten to where you did? And Sida resents that. I have no one to share my life with. I love like uh, I love like my, you have with Marquinhos, referring to Jules' eternal boyfriend. To what the sister, regretting her lack of financial uh, independence, replies, "I'd like to have my own money, Sida." So, Sida represents the professionally, uh, professionally successful black woman inserted in the artistic and urban scenery, scenery of uh, her time. 
This is emphasized by the custom in the scenery as pointed out before. On the other hand, Zhu represents the successful rural woman, marked by tradition and modernity in peculiar way. At the same time, that uh, Zhu positions her, uh, herself as the um, matriarch in the family, she leaves her sexuality as she well pleases. A an example is the, her denial in accepting a conventional relationship with Marquinhos. Uh, come on. After all this time together, you still don't have the courage to marry me? And she res answers, I'm never going to marry you. It's been such a long time, woman. It's, uh, it isn't uh, fine like that, man. We, uh, when we feel like it, we just see each other. Go and on Darman, stop staring at uh, me this way, pass me the bread. This slide eight. The church, scenery infused with Baroque style, brings up the Baroque characteristic of contradiction and conflict in the effort to conciliate paradoxes and anti-ethical values, such as the sacred and the profane, a birth and death. It is uh, inevitable to associate this atmosphere to the confessional tone between two sisters, as if they were voicing the confession of many contemporary women. women. There is an attempt of uh, conciliation endeavor not only for their difference uh, but also of their lives. And although the sister, sisters make peace, the movie ends at this part with no pretension to conciliate the internal conflict of the subject. To li literary uh, studies, we know that as uh, we can find in the Baroque, when opposite feelings we can find opposite feelings that will never be conciliated in poems, okay? Gerard Beton, uh, please the next one, commenting on the importance of the genre in the cinematographic language, states that in order to obtain harmony in the world of a physiological dramatic effect, it is necessary to be aware of uh, the organization and setting of all elements that arrange the image, from main elements uh, to the secondary elements. For one element might compromise or complete the other. Since these are joined together, since these are joined together, Beton adds, uh, please follow with me. Uh, unless the director paints uh, the background deliberately uh, nebulous, pay, playing with the field depth, the scenery becomes frequently another character instead of a simple location with no uh, other implication beyond its own materiality. Okay? In this way, please, next slide. The Baroque church used it as scenery added more meaning, balancing the set in a harmonic way. In my observation, the setting deserved highlight by the director in the first set of the film. Picture, uh, picture B, Jew perceives the arrival of the sister, niece, uh, niece and daughter. And picture E, the Saint Benedict that are, that are inside the church. They have, a, they get a close on the, um, and even uh, the, our lady Aparecida, the Brazilian patron who is dark skinned and the other two saints, uh, she sell it. This the other one. She sell it in the Baroque style. Uh, she's old. She's old. Yeah. She's old in the Baroque style. One of them, Santa Ephigenia. Okay, this one. And the other one we can't, uh, um, couldn't uh, identify. Maybe uh, Santa Barbara. Okay. 
Santa Efigenia, whose stories, uh, whose story comes from Ethiopia, and it's considered the, the patron of homes. Uh, next one, please. The Moor Saint, the Black Saint. Oh, please, please do come back, come back. Yes, again, please. I'll talk about this saint, okay? Saint Benedict, the Moor Saint, the Black Saint, the Cook Saint, or a Saint uh, Benedict is quite rever uh, revered by the Brazilian people and uh, his life trajectory. is associated to the suffering of slaves. The clothes on the images of the black saints is highly meaningful. Uh, it makes visible the pride of the Afro descendants and their relationship with Brazilian historical and cultural memory. Uh, besides uh, the religious images, the camera takes in the community people singing it, uh, litanies. Some figurative elements emerge, such as Congado group, in the patio of the Baroque church during the funeral of the Zed das Bicicletas. This shows the strong connection of the character uh, to this Afro Catholic cult, considering that such ritual has a meritorious nature. Please uh, follow with me the second one, one more one, yes. The funeral ceremony marks strongly the Congado ritual. After the death of a member, if it is an important one, like king or captain, a ritualistic dance must be realized for him to be buried. A king should be the throne or the crowned, and a captain must be the possessor of his post. Uh, the pigeon will be performed to uh, the sound of drums that say they are farewell to the uh, one who is gone towards the meeting with Our Lady. Vilarino. Okay. In the uh, chain of Zedas Bicicleta funeral, these characters are marked. Appar apparently, Milton Gonçalves character is flat Zé das Bicicletas, the character is Zé das Bicicletas. But his religious connection and the uh, resign, resigned uh, way in which uh, he talks uh, to his uh, grandfather about the, I'm sorry, he talks about with his granddaughter about the nature of women, subtly suggests a narrative unpredictability. Zeb became less demanding. He changed his world vision. The way he sees the past and his behavior toward his daughters and ex-wife. Hence, even if not explicit in the diagesis, it is noticeable that he, uh, this character develops itself in the narrative, turning into a round character. Please, the next one. According to Joel Zito Araújo, there is a time hiatus during which we don't know what has happened to him, Zé, but he becomes older and mellower and his participation in the Congado is the experience that results in the process of requiring pride in his negritude. The merger of the Congado, a typical ritual in the funeral of a person of cloud uh, in the hierarchy, tries to convey to the public the change in the father's history. Okay, please, next one. In this way, uh, the syncretic religious identity of Sida's family is not go unnoticed. These facts point out uh, the political conscience of uh, the family about their Afro-Brazilians, uh, uh, pardon, Brazilianness. On one hand, the syncretism takes the spectator to the obvious relationship between Minas Gerais and religion. On the other hand, in this relationship, there are two par aspects that reveal more about the political position of the director, of black identity and of the context. For many years, conventional 
uh, Brazilian history books contributed for the erasion of the identity of colonized subjects and slaves. This becomes uh, clear in various chapters of books on the history of Brazil, where the author suggests the passive character of slaves in the fa in face of their situation of subordination. In such books, uh, few are the mentions to insurgency movements organized by the slaves. And if mentioned, they choose those that were not successful, except for the few organized Marian societies. In the movie, therefore, the allusion to the congado made performers and the choice of the Baroque church as scenery are related to the religion syncretism, keeper of the knowledge of black culture. The presence of the ritual symbolizes the strength, faith, and union of that community, a form of resistance in, uh, to the domination of colonialists and Jesuits, as well as uh, the conventional history books. It is well known that the fact most of the Minas Gerais Baroque churches were built by slaves. Some of these become safe havens for blacks to practice their cults and follow their faith in their own manner, using uh, the images of uh, the Afro-Catholic entities they worshipped. In so being, according to the Isis McRoy, Daughters of the Wind develops a process of aesthetic representations of the Afro-diasporic cultural traditions. Traditions which are essentially theocentric. After all, the return of Sida and Dorinha to their little town of Lavras Novas in Minas Gerais also represents the return of the daughters from the cosmopolitan diaspora of Rio de Janeiro to the Afro-Catholic countryside of Minas Gerais. In conclusion, it is an innovation that in the post-retomada period of uh, Brazilian cinema, please, uh, this uh, particular movie represents particularities of the uh, Minas Gerais Afro-Catholic religion. At once, subtle and provoking, the, the referentiality, I'm sorry, the referentiality play of the movie, the mixture between fact and fiction, relatives in the spectator, and Afro-Brazilian historic memory in the affirmative manner. If, on one hand, it enchains references cultural and identitary to those who are already aware of them, in the other hand, it informs who those who do not recognize them. And when I say recognize, is when uh, respect to the other culture. Okay. Thank you very much. I stopped looking at the clock. I, theoretically, I'm the person organizing this event, but organization is not one of my gifts. Um, I'm not going to pay attention to the clock. I'm going to give you Joel Zito Araujo. And those of you that, that need to leave, like we understand it completely, but we are going to continue. Uh, and I give you Joel Zito Araujo. Whatever you feel like. Uh, first of all, thanks for uh, the invitation by this is my uh, Mike Roy. I think it's my side. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure. Uh, it's a so, it's so emotional for me to go that in place. Uh, brought the, my country. There are people, persons like this, that use my films in the classes. So, thanks, thanks for coming. I'd like to talk to you to answer some questions. I don't have a speech uh, about my films. I'd like to 
if uh, you have question about dollar doing in or about United uh, Brazil, I'm here, I'm not Question and comments. Please read. Question. The film okay. just watched the documentary. When was that? Uh, I released this film in 2000. Yeah. December 2000. Yes. Uh, it was a. Uh, this film you can feel uh, demand, demanded uh, about three years uh, researching. Because uh, not only me, but I could. Uh, I had supports from the from USP and the University of São Paulo and FAPESP, a uh, big center of research in Brazil in São Paulo. They support me with a grant about uh, five thousand dollars, and I could uh, uh, I could uh, hire six people. And see about 400 uh, telenovelas. <coughs> of course, there are a lot of telenovelas that disappear or has uh, only one scene or one chapter or ten chapters. So the the research was a, a tough uh, work. So uh, after, after that, I I wrote the screenplay and submitting some uh, how can I say uh, I don't I don't know his name for age public edital. Do you have this kind of thing? Edital. Edital. I'm sorry. Edital. Edital public. It's a kind of publico. It's a kind of licitation. It's a kind of licitation, competition. No, no. Yeah. Uh, a kind of competition uh, in the, for. Uh, oh, it's for bidding. It's bidding. It's bidding. Bidding for a contract. Hey, a public bidding process. Exactly. Exactly. So, if I assume this this girl, they could. Do this year. So, after this moment, uh, one year I could I could do my film. So the most part of the time uh, I spent editing because I received many materials, many images, many uh, moments uh, from the subjects. Have, have things changed now in 2014 when it comes to stereotypes with Brazil? I think so, a little bit, but the, the scenario is different now. After that, uh, the global network, the most important global in uh, Brazil, two or three years after my film, put on prime time the first uh, black protagonist. Thais Araújo. Araújo is a, uh, one of the protagonists of my film, uh, my daughter of the week. So after uh, this first soap opera, the names of the soap opera is Pecado, a cor de pecado. A pecado. The this color one. of skin, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Thais Araújo is that girl. She was the first protagonist on Globe Nero. So after that, uh, Global put her again in uh, another soap opera. So about four soap opera, uh, uh, we could see Black's protagonists. But it's, it's important. For us, it's a, a, a win. Uh, a conquista, how can you say that's a rich? A conquest. But if you think that 
in the last 10 years, global, uh, global network put on, on air about uh, 40 so called telenovelas. It doesn't mean. It. So, another important information is telenovelas. Telenovelas plus the soap opera. It's different than soap opera mess, but it's the same model, the same origin. Telenovelas is uh, the most important uh, audiovisual industry in Brazil. Telenovelas for Brazil is like Hollywood for the uh, US. So, the guy or the girl that became a star on telenovelas, especially the protagonists of the, the, the telenovela da Zoi. Yeah. The telenovela da Zoi is the most important uh, telenovela in the day. Uh, telenovela da Zoi means eight p.m. Uh, yeah. But it's in the prime time, so. Uh, about, about 8 million people, people follow day by day soap operas in Brazil. The most important soap opera the, in the final, in the last week, in the final five chapters, uh, if the soap opera became very popular, maybe about 140 million people follow this last week. So it's a phenomenon. And to be the star in, in a soap opera, it means a lot in Brazil. It's different than Brazilian films. The most part of the Brazilian filmmakers are independent films. The most part of the films produced, produced in Brazil, uh, the budget is about one million, one million and a half dollars. So it's two different reacts. How much would be your budget for a right Let's try to, to calculate. For a chapter is about three hundred or four hundred thousand dollars. One one regular uh, season? Uh, no, not season. Telenovela. Yeah, yeah. It means between one hundred and uh, twenty chapters. Or uh, until 180 chapters. Can you imagine? Yeah. To do a telenovela in Brazil means to do 50 or 60 feature films. And when, and when you mentioned that for the final uh, segments, are given by 140 million people. That's half the population of Brazil. More than half. More than half. More than half. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Uh, is there a, do they keep them like in the Cinemateca? Is there a place where they're you know, preserved? Yes. Uh, the group network preserves uh, its support. Mm -hmm. uh, the other chambers, the, the, the actual, the, the actual channels present uh, its so called. But the, the so called from the 80s, 70s, yeah. 60s, you can uh, see it on Cinematheque of this day in Sao Paulo. Okay. Um, I wrote down a couple of uh, quotes from. I think the beginning of the movie. Okay. I wrote them in Portuguese, so I read them in Portuguese and I will translate for all of us. 
Uh, one of them was about Isaura Bruno, the uh, first Mamie-like character, yeah. uh, the actress. Um, you said, nos impediram de ver o desfecho trágico de Isaura Bruno. Um, um, that people in Brazil just couldn't recognize the tragedy that happened with Isaura Bruno. They, analytically, they couldn't just wrap their mind, they couldn't recognize it. And then you said also about yourself, um, my, minha cabeça de jovem mulato voltada para o embranquecimento me traiu. Uh, my mind of uh, uh, mulato uh, in, um, the words whitening um, betrayed me. So, and, and then now we have this moment where that is like time one where people can't make these connections and then that is time two where people can make these connections. What is the process in between? Because, you know, a lot of people talk about ideas of false consciousness and uh, there's a lot of struggle with um, Brazil importing racial categories from the US. So what's in between that time when you were a mulatto kid who couldn't, who were betrayed by your mm -hmm. consciousness and now? If you see the film again, uh, in some way I talk about my own process uh, to become uh, from mulatto to after death. <coughs> Especially in the last part of the film, when I quoted uh, one so perfect that uh, one character refused to show a black box. Yes. It was my history. So, uh, and I think it's the, the it's in a symbolic way is the history of Brazil in Latin America. Yes. So, a big, a big difference between U.S., the race, race relations in U.S., and the race relations in Brazil, in Mexico, in Venezuela, in Colombia, in many countries, in the South America, is because the whitening ideology uh, uh, is, an, uh, is a, a strong thing that in our, in our uh, history, personal history, interfered in our uh, uh, self-esteem. Yeah. So the most part of Brazilian people are half desert. Now, the number of the people that uh, in the national census recognize themselves as half descendant in this the, in the category in the categories that you understand as half descendant negros and mulatos and barbers uh, today is 51 percent percent 51 but if you see the national census in 10 years ago the number of Brazilian people that recognized themselves as half descendant was 43%. So in 10 years, we can see a process of to be proud about our black origin. But it doesn't mean that you are not a mix. A mixed racial country. The most part of the Brazilian people are mixed, mixed people. Uh, mixed, how can I say that? Racially mixed. Racial, racial, racially mixed. Mixed. So, <coughs> but what problem different here is to convince the most part of the population to be proud about the uh, African origin. 
for native uh, indigenous origins. It's the problem, as you think. Because the Brazilian culture uh, press and offer uh, ways for the white or <coughs> European descendant to be proud about their uh, origin. For example, in my country, it's normal. Uh, people say, uh, my father uh, is from Spain. My, my grandfather is from Germany. My, uh, say, my mother is from Portugal. It's normal. But that's OK. Oh, it's a kind of uh, a label that I'm, uh, I have a good origin. But if I say, my grandfather is from Angola, it's a shock for this country. It's a provocative attitude. Do you understand? So, in, order, in the Brazilian culture, in my opinion, the Latin America, the Hispanic, in Portuguese uh, countries, colonized, colonized by Portuguese and Spanish, Spanish people, they, uh, they achieve this, this uh, imaginary that the most part of the population are not white and has uh, shame for their there uh, are no white origin. So, in my opinion, the black movement in Brazil uh, is a movement for uh, improve the high service, improve the conscience of it's important to recognize themselves as uh, Afro-Descent. Afro -descent. So, it's different than here. I think the most part of the people doesn't believe in a separate uh, nation. Blacks here, whites there, Spanish there, Japanese there. No, no. This, this ideology of, the mis of miscegenation is still strong in Brazil. In my opinion, it's not, not a bad thing. It's a good, good thing. In my opinion, the bad thing is that for elite in Brazil, for media in Brazil, to be mixed, it means a process to become white. It's the problem. So, this movement and this guy, these actors, this, this, uh, the political movement in Brazil, is first uh, for the recognition, recognition, recognition of our black origin and native origin first. Second, for uh, equal opportunities. In this way, in this way, the, the experience of the Af North America is so important for us. The, uh, the affirmative action is the only way that you could uh, find out, uh, you could fi find out uh, to, to overcome what deeply uh, inequality in our country. For example, the black movement is start with the, the, the this campaign for quotas for blacks on university, on, on Brazilian university. And now it's a reality in Brazil. But not only for black movement, for uh, black people, for native people, for poor people. So uh, there are many similarities 
the experience here is important for us. But uh, we are conscious about the difference. But it's important to discuss that the myth of racial democracy, of democracy in Brazil, is a bush. It's not a reality. It's important to discuss and to prove it. This doesn't, doesn't mean that I don't like the idea that my country can be, in the future, a model for uh, racial democracy. I love this idea, but it's not a reality. The, the people that use this myth use for uh, suffoc the black identity. Oh, man. Oh, man. To folk, uh, the movement for uh, equality between blacks, whites, native people. So, sorry for the long speech in the my my better English. Could you follow me? Yes. 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 Okay, yes. I have a question. Okay. So, going back to Dodge and Win, now is this in your class that some of the characters? Um, had a little bit of symbolism. She mentioned that some of the characters seemed like Orishas, like they had this yeah. symbolism coming from the African Catholic religion. There are two uh, two reference about the uh, Afro religion by few. One important thing to say is, I think my film is the first uh, feature narrative film that shows the tradition of the Afro-Catholic uh, religion. If you go to Salvador, you can see it, uh, it there. But uh, the Salvador, uh, it's so important, it's so beautiful to see the, uh, the African religion, like Candomblé, Umbanda, especially Candomblé in Salvador. But if you go to countryside in my country, the most part of the black people is part of this tradition, the African religion. Uh, in Congado, Mozambique, there are many traditions in this, in this kind of religion. So, I put in my film, uh, I, I, my intention was to show how beautiful is this tradition. In the same way, in my life, I could see that the uh, uh, religion uh, remains. In Minas Gerais, we are suffocated by, by the Portuguese because the Minas Gerais states was the most important state in my country uh, with minerals, especially gold, diamonds. So, for the, 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 the Portuguese colonizers, it was the special area to protect, to control. Because in the 19th century, was the part of Brazil uh, richer than others. A lot of gold, a lot of diet, a lot of many, many kinds of minerals. So, in the same movement, they supported the, the, the black religion in Jedi's. But the, the, the blacks, like the US, use the, use, uh, the Catholicism in a specific way to affirm their identity. So it remains in Jedi's. But the, the African religion, the Candomblé, and Umbanda, Remain true in a minority. In some documentary that I did, that I, 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 had, I had the opportunity to, 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 to do, to, to, uh, 
Jim, uh, uh, was a surprise for me when, for example, the, the people from Congo, if you go to, to Contagem, the, the, big, the big urban area around Belo Horizonte, in, the big, in this area, the one of the most important people uh, from Congo is from there. Uh, the name of them is a todos community. They are in my field. So and I visit the tourist community. They have a kind of uh, a house in a kind of a church, a little church in front of uh, the house. And you can see Saint, Saint Benedict, Saint Virginia. You can see this Catholic Saint. But in the back, in the back, four, only four close friends, you can see the whole origins. So, what I try to, to put in my field is these two influences, the most visible influence the Afro-Catholicism and this other influence from the Orishas. In this way, the, these characters, uh, each one has uh, one Orisha. Mm -hmm. Yemanja. Who is he? Yemanja is a uh, No, no, Ju. No, Ju. Ju, Ju. Exactly, exactly, Ju. So, uh, it was an influence for me. Not only in this way, but when I... Uh, I was thinking about the, the, the personality of my characters. In my debate with uh, uh, Jim Moretti, my partner, too, that, uh, that wrote the screenplay. One good exercise for us, uh, for, for, uh, for us uh, was think who is the Orisha of Ju? Who is the Orisha of Torinha? Let's try to imagine if she uh, has this orisha and uh, the other has the other uh, orisha, what kind of, conf of conflict yeah. they have? Yeah. It was an inspiration for us in the, the film. And you can see some part of, the, uh, of this inspiration in that clothes. In that, uh, Mind if I push? Uh, Sorry? Do you mind if I push you a little bit more on that question that I asked? Okay. okay. Because I, I, I completely agree with your answer. I'm not okay. trying to challenge your answer. Okay. I just think that uh, the my, my question about um, so in the first moment there you are with this consciousness, and in the second moment you have a different consciousness, yes. and then what happens in between? Mm -hmm. You gave me w which I agree with this very high structural answer that is very standard, but individually, for you at the individual level, what, what happens when you change from one moment to another? Is it exposure to social movements? Is it uh, personal relationships? Is it uh, life ex particular Both. life experiences? Both. Uh, Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to, to say. Uh, my parents divorced when I was six years old. And my mother, uh, different of my father. My father is from a white family, and my mother from uh, a, black, a black family. After the divorce, my father uh, became, in the beginning, a trucker, 
Perfect. And then could build a uh, uh, small company. In about 15 years, he bought seven, seven trucks. But my mother, no. My mother became uh, mad. Lavadeira, how can I say lavadeira? Washerwoman. Washerwoman. Uh, uh, factory work. So, I, my option was for my mother. I think part of my work is uh, my mother's fault. <laughs> because it was my, my option. It's one of uh, one part of my 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 process. Another part was when I was young, when I was uh, 18 years old, old, I could see Chef, the Black Profession films, the music from uh, US. I could see the, the African independence and his, uh, their leaders. So it became a uh, caldo de cultura. Traduce this for a stool of culture. Yes. Yeah. For my personal formation. When I was, uh, when I, I when I was in my graduation, I did psychology. Imagine undergraduate. Undergraduate. Imagine why I decided okay. to, to to go to a psychology uh, undergraduation. So uh, in my in my college. I think the number of mulatos, mulatos was about 10. Mulatos. I can't remember one really black, black skin.